All right. So I want to first off uh, alert you guys that this is the first in a series of messages. Um, Kathy Sexton, Lori Sinclair, and myself have endeavored to put together a series of messages for you, you guys as business owners as we approach the end of the year. So I hope you'll stay tuned uh, to the Grow Showcase for the next couple of months, and these are designed to build on each other. Um, I also want to say to you guys that uh, while the topic is business tax planning, you're listening to a history major. So I am not a CPA. I am not an accountant. Uh, but I do work with business owners all day, every day. And what we endeavor to do is help them build value, acquire value, and then sell for the highest value. And the one thing I know for sure is that taxes have a direct impact on value. And what I've observed is that business owners who follow the simple steps that I'm going to share with you always get the best results. So I invite you to consider these steps if you desire to receive the best results for your company as well. So simply speaking, what we're going to talk about today are four things. First off, to pay or not to pay. Uh, secondly, definitely pay attention. Third, we're going to talk a little bit about what's new for 2021. And then fourth, avoiding the year-end surprise. So I want to preface further by saying tax laws change regularly. Not only do the, the general laws themselves, but, but during the course of every year, there are always interpretations and the IRS issues bulletins about the interpretations and the effect of those. So we're seeing right now the news is dominated by the president's uh, three and a half trillion dollar uh, American, uh, I guess you might call it a rescue plan. I can't remember the acronym that they use, but they're in certainly endeavoring to spend a lot of money, which means they got to raise a lot of money and a lot of that and all that money is going to come from taxes. So taxes are going to affect us all. So to pay or not to pay. There are really two primary approaches to consider when you think about taxes. And internal bookkeepers, so if you have an internal bookkeeper at your company, the, the experience that we've seen is internal bookkeepers are not very good at taxes. Lots of times they're family members. Um, they're really good at recording transactions, but they're not very good at staying up with the changes in tax codes and how that can affect a particular business. Obviously, accountants and CPAs feel that it's their responsibility to help minimize your taxes. And that's a key thing. Um, they generally do that believing that they're working in your favor. But when, when I say to pay or not to pay, there are a couple of instances where you might want to consider maximizing the amount of income that your business produces versus minimizing the amount of income, thus minimizing your tax responsibility. I would also say if you're not receiving tips and updates from your CPA or accountants, you should consider changing advisors. Keep in mind, they are one of your most important trusted advisors. And most people don't change very often. They, they just tend to stay with uh, whoever they started with. But as your business grows and the dynamics of your business change, that advice becomes even more beneficial for you. So if you're not getting regular tips and updates from your advisors, talk to your advisor first, make sure they've got information to share. And if you find that they don't have information to share very often, you might want to consider talking with other advisors because in today's world, there are accountants and CPAs that focus on almost every individual niche. You can find specialists and those specialists can be very, very meaningful. So what are the two approaches? First approach is reducing taxes. So what does that involve? That involves reducing the net income that the business shows. So if you're going to be an owner of your business for many years into the future and you want to basically uh, build value in your company, remember that reducing taxes doesn't always illustrate the value that your company may achieve, right? So your accountant is almost always going to be focusing you on reducing your taxable burden. 
And that's, that's generally a good thing. Nobody wants to pay more than what's due. But the big thing is to really to take advantage of everything that's available to you in that regard. And, and accountants are generally very good at that, I would say. However, if you get to the point where you're thinking of exiting your business at some point in the future, I want to invite you to consider a different strategy. And that is basically increasing the amount of net income that your business produces over time. So if you establish that I would like to retire at the age of 65 and you're five years away from that, over the course of the next five years, I would invite you to consider improving the net income of your business and actually paying a little more tax on your business because the net income that your business generates is the cornerstone of value in your business. So if you have focused on a tax minimization strategy for many years and then decide you want to exit, it can be very difficult for you to achieve the total value that's that's involved in your company. Because as a buyer, as they're looking at your financial performance, they're saying, well, wait a minute, you're, you don't, your company doesn't really make a lot of money, right? But if they can see a trend where your business has made more money every year for three to five years, generally it gives them a lot of confidence to uh, want to buy a business like that because it looks like the trend is heading in exactly the right direction. So it, that occurs to build value within the company. So again, when I've when you think about running your business for the longer term, you should always be focused on minimizing your tax uh, tax liability. But as you begin to move into the exit period and the exit strategy of your business, I would invite you to think about adjusting that strategy to actually building the net, the net operating income of your business. So people can see an increasing trend over time. And use of capital is a really important consideration in that regard. And we'll talk about that later as we get into kind of the year end surprise stuff. So first principle, to pay or not to pay, depends upon where you are in the life cycle ownership of your business. But always definitely pay attention. You, there are several things that are taking place now. The, the Tax Act of 2017 changed the, the amount of tax that corporations pay versus paths through entities like sole proprietorships and partnerships. And a lot of folks over the last couple of years have explored seriously changing the type of entity that they have, the legal structure of their business. And I would say to you that uh, if you're in a growing business where, you're, where your net income continues to grow and you're going to own it for the long time, then you might want to explore the tax impact of an entity change for you. But remember that you can't do this very often. So you, you, know, you, you can't bounce back and forth between corporations and pass through entities depending upon the vagaries of the tax laws. So this is a very, very strategic decision and you got to think about that long term. Right now, as we sit here today, September 15th, you got eight months of results already in the books, right? And we really can't change the past, but you're, we're only three quarters of the time through the year. So you still have time. So, you know, one of the things that we see very often is that business owners are working hard every day to deal with the current environment. And they really overlook the big picture of, you know, what is going on from a tax perspective for my business. And they don't worry about that until the end of the year. What uh, I'm suggesting that you do is adjust your thinking in that regard and really pay attention to what the tax changes have, have, have uh, delivered over the course of the last year or so, how that's going to affect your business. And if you have been somewhat um, immune to that or haven't had good counsel from your accountants and CPAs, reach out to them and do a little bit of planning as you move towards the end of the year. And again, I just want to reemphasize that changes take place throughout the year, right? And, you know, you need to be aware of things like the Tax Cut and Jobs Act of 2017 and how that can affect your business. You need to be aware of depreciation because the rules around depreciation have changed. And your accountant and CPA and bookkeeper may be aware of that, but you as a business owner may not be. And you need to be aware of what impact that can have on the net income for your business. And then, you know, we've all been uh, been living through this this pandemic, but the 
many of us have taken advantage of the aid programs that are available to business owners. And you need to be aware of how those are going to affect your business as well. So take a good look around. Um, there are a huge amount of changes. Uh, one of the most significant ones for 2021 uh, was the reinstatement of 100% deductions for business meals. You know, we, we kind of got conditioned by the tax changes of the past that we couldn't write off business meals. Now, all of a sudden, uh, the uh, CARES Act enables us to do that again. And the Tax and Jobs Act of uh, 2017 had significant changes in what's called the Section 129. So um, if you are buying equipment um, and have significant capital investment in your business, particularly if you're a construction firm, a contractor, or some type of manufacturing business where you've got lots of capital equipment, there have just been significant changes. The other thing that the COVID CARES Act enabled was the investments that you could make in your business for renovations for, to, to protect you against things like, uh, you know, uh, sharing the pandemic uh, or sharing the virus, right? So if you had to put up lots of sneeze guards or you had to reconfigure the way your business operated, all of those renovations are, uh, are, are totally tax deductible. And of course, many of us uh, as business owners were able to take care of the Paycheck Protection Program, right? So, you know, sometimes we may have even had a double dip on that. So if you had a, a two-time bonus that, that took place, you know, you may have some other income that you're going to have to uh, think about, and you need to be clear on whether or not that is completely exempted from the way you report your numbers to the IRS. So there were lots of things that came in place in the CARES Act. I've highlighted a few of them up here. You should be aware, particularly if you had losses in the past, you can now bring those forward and reuse those. And I also want to call out um, charitable donations. So there have been some significant changes to how you can utilize donations in your business. And uh, you can actually shield up to 25% of your business income by using charitable donations. So there's, there's a lot of uh, tools that are available. Uh, had, a, had somebody, uh, a recent client that wasn't aware that business equipment also included the vehicles that, uh, that they may have for themselves, which they write off in their business. So I, I made a last minute note to include that in there, make sure that this audience is certainly aware of that. There are a lot of tax credits that came out over the course of the last year and a half. Make sure you talk to your advisors and are taking advantage of all of those things. And then finally, you know, this may be the year where you want to think about prepaying expenses to reduce your operating income. You know, if, if Congress in its infinite wisdom does pass uh, some of these major spending bills that they're contemplating, we all know that that's going to be uh, going to have to be paid for at some point in the future. And the people that pay for that, first and foremost, are going to be the business owners, which includes basically everybody on this call, right? So this may be the year to consider uh, prepaying expenses, reducing your operating income, or excuse me, pulling income forward and, and, and moving operating expenses into the future so that you have a higher level of income this year because your tax rate may be lower this year than it could be in the future. So... Uh, Pay close attention to that stuff. Key point here, avoid the year-end surprise, right? So what is the year-end surprise? What, what we see very often is that uh, some point in December, all of a sudden the business owners out there busy planning on uh, year-end, working their business as hard as they can, uh, engaged in all of the holiday festivities that occur and the and all of a sudden, the accountant rings them up and says, oh, by the way, it looks like you're going to have a, uh, a big tax liability this year. You need to go out and buy something, buy some equipment, buy some vehicles, do something to affect that, right? Don't get um, surprised by that year-end call. Start with an objection. Start with the objective to either be minimizing your tax liability or maximizing the value that your company is illustrating. So have an objective in mind as you're going throughout the year. Next thing I would encourage you to do is know exactly where you are. Don't be surprised. If you've had a really good year this year, and there are many, many businesses, particularly those in the contractor space that have done really, really well, 
know where you are, have an understanding of what your liability could be, and make sure that you're planning for that. And definitely discuss the impact of all the tax changes with your accountants and CPA. Don't wait till the end of the year because they're going to be swamped. They're going to have everybody that wants to talk to them at that point in time. So make sure you're having those discussions as you move forward. And then pay particular attention to the timing and revenues, particularly this year. If you have a belief that tax laws could change significantly for next year, and that might impact you and, and your family, now's the time to begin to plan for those. And then finally, I just want to remind you, there are tremendous advantages to charitable giving now from a tax perspective. Take a look at exploring those. It, you know, it might be important to you and your family to, instead of sending Uncle Sam, you know, more tax revenue, maybe you, maybe you send some of that money to charities, which enable you to reduce your, your tax liability. So good time to take a look at that. So folks, I would invite everybody on this call, take out your phone, if you will, pull up your calendar, And one of the things I would like for you to do is pick a date between October 21st and November 20th and plan for a business planning day. Invest in yourself and your business. Pick a date and time, put it on your calendar and make it happen. Everybody got it done? All right, look forward to seeing you next month as uh, Kathy takes us into the second message in our series of year-end business planning. Thank you very much for your attention this morning.